Hello, my friends. This is the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twin Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. And that's Not Just Blowing Smoke. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Hello, everybody, and that was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. This week, we're coming at you live from Hooks It, our old classic location. Old classic. classic yes, old. classic location. Classical. And I've got, uh, as you can see, Nick and Dave with me. Pat oh. is not here tonight. And uh, I'm Pastor Padron, and tonight we are smoking this, the Aladino Classic from JRE Tobacco. This is the Toro size, and it features a Honduran Habano wrapper, a Corojo binder, and then Habano and Corojo in the filler. And the mm. whole idea behind this cigar was to have something in their lineup that was not so Corojo forward and was more classic cigar yeah. tasting, hence the name classic. Well. And um, uh, the question for tonight is, you know, when you call something classic, when yeah. you call a whole line classic, that's that's a pretty bold thing. It is. You know, so is this actually classic? I don't or, know. you know, that's what we're going to find out tonight. We're going to find out whether or not this cigar is worthy of the name classic. Well, I mean, I'm an Aladino fan. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, we all are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the so the thing for me when 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 you see a, a cigar that says classic, I always go back to now is it does it is it gonna taste like something from the classics mm-hmm. from something you know when Cubans were rolled on the regular when everybody was using Cuban tobacco even though obviously you know no companies out there right now can get Cuban tobacco and put it in their cigars in the United States mm-hmm. but you know is it gonna go that far for me is it gonna taste like a classic Cuban or maybe a classic have you had a classic Cuban. Well, I because have... what they were aiming for was the Cubans that were made during the the forties through the sixties. Mm. I'm pretty sure none of us here had any of that. I don't know. No, I don't know. True. I don't no. know. So do we really have a fair comparison? <laughs> no, of course but, not. But you know what I mean? Is it, is it gonna, I for somebody know, like me, where where I've where had, I do I've consume, had a Monte Cristo number two, yeah, everybody and, has, and, they, and their vintage tastes exactly like a Monte Cristo number two. Their vintage Toro, yeah. I think, tastes exactly like a Monte Cristo number two. Yeah. So that being said, they, from my experience, them mimicking mm-hmm. Cuban is like pretty much right on. Yeah. So I mean, I would give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Well, for me, I mean. When I smoked this for the first time, I, I, that's immediately that's what I thought. Man, mm-hmm. this is definitely earns that badge of being the classic. Mm-hmm. It has that, I would say that that classic taste to it. I that guess classic taste. That classic, like Coca Cola. It's a classic. It's definitely very different tasting from their. Uh, oh the, yeah. Than the other cigars in their lineup. It's not very. You know what I mean. Most of the cigars in their lineup are very obviously. You know the mm-hmm. Corojo forward, and mm-hmm. you know and and. It mixes in well with, you know, the wrappers and everything that they're mm-hmm. that they that they put on their cigars. But I mean, this one, you know, when they're using the Habano wrappers and the yeah. the Baha- yeah, Habano tobacco in there, it really kind of brings a classic kind of notion to the cigar. Yeah, and while we haven't smoked Cubans from the, you know, forties to sixties, mm. you know, um, Julio Aroa has. Oh yeah, uh, mm-hmm. who's the guy behind this cigar? So. Um, I'm going to trust that that's what he was aiming for. Yeah. And, you know, the question is, you know, while we don't know what that was mm-hmm. experientially, you know, you know, how does this, how does this turn out for us as far as being a good cigar? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so while we're smoking this, we're also drinking something that tonight. We are. Oh yeah. Nick actually yeah. brought something himself. I yes, did. He did. So Thank you, I man. brought, I've, I've had this in the past. Um, it's definitely in my rotation. It's a classic. It is a classic for me, uh, kind of new classic. 
um, <laughs> because I've, I've the first time I bought this was maybe a couple months ago, and a, a, a customer of ours, a friend of ours, <laughs> it's already a classic. classic. It's already a classic, and um, well, he introduced. He told me if it, you know, something that is another because I'm a big Scotch guy at home, so another. Uh, another brand that I would definitely like to get into with is Arbor and this is the Arbor 12. It's about 55 bucks at uh, our New Hampshire liquor store, and um, I'll read you a little uh, a little a little literature a about it. What do we a little literature. Uh, it's 12 year Scotch whiskey, double cast, rich in citrus character. The 12 year exp- uh, ex- expression is a fine example of how. The distinctly crisp citrus character of Arbolor's new distillate is definitely, or not definitely, definitely, defiantly. Uh, defiantly? No, it's not defiantly. Uh, definitively. So, yeah, definitely <laughs> softened by double cast mature ma- maturation. I'm really oh bad gosh. at reading. Wow, I'm really oh. messing this up. Oh. Anyways, it's good. It's damn good. <laughs> it's smooth. So when I was I was when I was at the store, I was thinking about a couple of ones. The, the one I really kind of wanted to get when I, I couldn't find, they didn't have it in. It was uh, Boonahabin. Mm-hmm. Boonahabin is another uh, really you. good. Oh, thank you. A really good single malt. Um, had some really good characteristics. Had a little smoky, uh, a little peatedness in it. So I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to get these guys into. Doing a little peated scotch because I don't want to throw off this whole thing because this scar is really smooth, but it doesn't have any of that heavy, yeah. uh, just heavier notes. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, some heavier <laughs> notes. And this is a really smooth cigar, really creamy. It's so. not at all what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> not a, do we even know what that means? <laughs> we looked that up later. <laughs> I don't know if the French knows what that means. Oh, it? my God. Well, that, anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But, but I wanted to get that one. But then I'm like, no, you know what? I'll I'll do the Abalor. And the Abalor I know is a really, really good single malt. You can does have, it Abalor? It does. I've smoked it with Maduros. I smoked it with Connecticut's, and it really holds up and it really kind of balances out the the cigar that you're smoking with it. And whether it's like I said, whether if it's a Connecticut or a Maduro or a Cameroon or whatever, it really holds up really nice. And that's what we're drinking. Yeah. So, what do we think of the pairing so far? Mm. I think it's so far it's pairing really well. Yeah. The um, I'm still trying to get this down. This is a very earthy cigar to me. It is, yeah. The um, and I think that the Arbolor is really bringing that even more out to me. Um, the retro hail is just um, it's creamy. There's like some kind of weird spice in this. In the cigar, what, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't want to call it baking spice because it's not. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna chew on that. Yeah, Danny, what do you think about the pairing so far? The between the cigar and and the abalor. Well, knowing your love for peated things, yes, I was very afraid. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we had a conversation at that and. You know, this this has, you know, some of that peaky, peaty smokiness in it, but it's not near as strong as uh, what I was afraid of. Mm. And, you know, there's a there's a woodiness and earthiness in it. And off the nose, I don't know about you guys, but I, I like it apple. I didn't get yep. sweetness. I got apple. Yeah. It, Maybe it, that's it's, it. But it, it's like, it's it's like really the, good. I don't know if it's cedar or if it's... Are you like talking you, about the, 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 the scotch? I'm talking, I'm talking about, about the scotch. Oh, you're talking yeah, about so, the scotch? Yeah, so shut up. Um, <laughs> you're so nice, Dan. Thank you. Well, you Let know. You tell we're brothers. I'm talking yes. about the scotch, and you start, oh, but the, the, the cedar and the cigar. All right. So I've completely forgotten my point. Now. Apples. Yes. Apples. I smell apples on the nose mm-hmm. of, the, of the scotch. Yes. Agreed. Um, and it goes, you know, those, those kind of notes – really complement the cigar it does yeah um it does it's still a it's still a pretty strong scotch mm-hmm. to the cigar correct but 
it does complement those earthy notes, those leathery notes, those cedary notes that Dave was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it goes really well. I'm going to sit on it and decide whether or not it, it's an awesome pairing or just a good pairing. <laughs> yes. But it's at the very least, it's a good pairing. Yeah, for me, it's the same thing. I mean, the the scotches bring a little bit more of the earthy notes in there. There is a, a little bit of a, the fruity citrus note in there as well mm -hmm. which is really nice i do get that little bit of touch of peat right at the end right mm -hmm. in the finish um but i think it really goes really well with the with the aldino classic i think it's mm -hmm. just bringing out more of the earthy notes it is bringing for me it's bringing out a little bit more of that that spice in there too with the corojo yeah. and everything it's it's doing a really really good job it's like so it's, far i feel like it's like if you took cinnamon and you made it milder by adding vanilla notes mm. with the I mean? cigar with the cigar like yeah. that's the sweetness i'm getting it's like this mild cinnamon vanilla sort yeah. of mix there's a really nice there's a really nice sweetness with the cigar a little bit with of uh vanilla bean vanilla. Yeah. yeah yeah there's a little bit of mm. of spice in there too you kind of, if you smoke the glass i think you really kind of pick that up dave mm. Let's uh, Let's smoke the glass. Smoke the glass, everybody. Yeah, those it does. It, it brings out some of the vanilla notes and and uh, that you're talking about. And I think that spice, you know, it's a cinnamon kind of spice. Um, so I don't think you're far off, Dave. All right. Um. Let's see here. Shaky, 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 shaky. Let's. Uh, I don't have my little mouse. So we have to uh, the old-fashioned old way here. Yeah, baby, smoke that smoky. Uh, yeah. What are y'all thinking? One second, brother. Oh, that is a totally different dynamic. Wow. Get more more everything and it kind of dies down the the long finish yeah but yeah it's the still long coach, finish it's still viscous yeah but i mean like the there before smoking smoking the drink the, there was a, a yeah, there was a very recognizable peaty finish on there not heavily like an art bag or uh lafroy or anything like that or uh log of woolen or anything but i mean vanilla really comes out it is yeah mm -hmm. it's definitely changed the dynamic of the scotch very yes, yeah, nice. it's, it's... I'm, I'm maybe even banana. Are you yeah. talking about the cigar, Dave? The the <laughs> with the way after you smoke the drink, you get like the, the creaminess <laughs> of the cigar. For me, now is more like banana than it is banana. On the on the nose, you can definitely definitely tell that it's like a banana. Even though he probably uh, cemented that in my mm. subconscious, and now that's all I now that's all I, I smell. Know, right? It's like a, I don't know. It's definitely a fruit to the apple. <laughs> a banapple. More banana. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Yes, moving on. Um, we've kind of, as as far as events at Twins go, you guys just did one here mm. last yep. week. Uh, know Your Rapper with, um, um, why can't I remember his first name? Travis. Travis. Thank you. Yes, Travis Papenheim. He, he, when we he had, we had. He his stuff. He does. When we had it the morning of last Friday morning, we had our the to, you know Getting the tobacconist. We had our kind of our little our little tasting and stuff. And uh, for me, he was re I really was taken back. I mean, him explaining every explaining everything and the knowledge that he was presenting and just his well, presence was just like wow. Like this guy knows his shit. This guy is fucking knee deep in tobacco he knows mm -hmm. ins and outs and it was just like for me it was just like such was, an awesome awesome presentation i was like I mean? the tip of the iceberg at that when he did the presentation here yeah um people are asking really good questions and mm -hmm. i mean we're talking like how do they change the soil what type of soil does it is and he starts going in how they get the nitrogen in and it did mm. this he was lifting on you know stuff you just would like he knew everything Everything. Yeah. Every little thing. What a I, you know, what a guy. How the how the fields are taken care of, how the how the uh you know, the how they're how they're picked, how they're stored, how they're rotated, mm -hmm. how you know, every single step is just like he knows every intricate part of each step, you know? 
and uh, why they do it, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, which is even more impressive than just being able to list off facts, You're right. you know, yeah. and that was, that was just awesome. Like, you know, it was a really great experience. I hope we do it again. Yeah. 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 Very, very good. Not yeah. to mention it sold out. So yeah, yeah. that was great too. Um, you know, the next real big event we've got going on at either store really after that is 724 day, mm -hmm. which is 721 this year Aww. because 724 is a monday boo, boo. but it's going to be a so the friday 721 mm. um is going to be the 724 day party <clears throat> and um it's going to be a massive all-day event at twins in london Dairy. There'll be specials on 724 cigars at both of our locations mm -hmm. but there's going to be the a party going to be at london the Dairy. party's going to be at london Dairy. Yep. and uh, I'll have more on that as as things progress, but um, cool. you know, there's we're talking doing a a, a cigar 101 table, a pipe 101 table, Whoa. doing uh, bingo. We're, ta we're we've got a, a, a hot dog machine, you know, like a cart. Mm -hmm. You know, hot dog steamer, popcorn 724 maker. gaggers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's going to be live music. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be all sorts of things. And it's just going to be, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully next week I'll have more information for you guys. But, yeah. Uh, we're still yeah. nailing down the, the final things, but it's going to be good all day long. It's going to be good. Um, I'm looking forward to that. It's a big day every year. It's going to be a good day. Yeah. Now it's time for the uh, 724 cool. flashback. Mm. That what happened today, Dan? Weekly segment that highlights historical events brought to you by 724 Cigars. Smoke a piece of history. Absolutely. And today's is really interesting. Um, on this day in 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that state bans on same-sex marriage were unconstitutional. Whoa. What year? 2015. 2015. Oh. Unconstitutional. And uh, um, basically what that went into was, you know, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, let's see. The state, uh, let's see. Uh, Ober... <laughs> <laughs> Obergefell versus Hodges legal case in which the United States Supreme Court ruled five to four on June 26, 2015, that state bans on same sex marriage and on recognizing same sex marriages duly performed in other jurisdictions are unconstitutional under the due process and equal protection clauses of the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So I think the thing being really argued at the time was if you got married to somebody of the same gender as you or sex. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows what these terms mean anymore? Yeah. In a state that allowed it, mm -hmm. but you went to a state that didn't allow it. Were you, could they say you weren't married because yeah. we don't do that here? Right. And the Supreme Court ruled that you cannot. Uh -huh. You're not allowed to, to discriminate that way. Nope. Can't yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, interestingly, uh, two years earlier mm -hmm. to the day, yes, the Supreme Court in the United States versus Windsor uh, struck down the provision in the Defense of Marriage Act that defined marriage for federal purposes as a legal union between a man and a woman. Ooh. Well, two very interesting go. things that go for that, you know, the whole gender thing hey, whatever you want to call it they want to get married let them get married you know? i mean who cares at this point in this this day and age it's 2023 i mean <laughs> jesus you guys want to get married go for it shit we'll have it at twin smoke shop danny will danny the the passive padron over here will uh ordain the wedding well and then we'll have the ceremony upstairs and <laughs> drinks on the house <laughs> wow. Kurt, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I think it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. That uh, both those things happened two years ago 
mm. you know, Curious on the day. same on the on the day. Mm-hmm. Um, very interesting stuff. It's really kind of created a, a whole big firestorm of ideas and and you know states overstepping the federal government overstepping yeah. you know and i'm not really in the mood to get into the whole religious part of that whole thing mm-hmm. but you know from a you know in in my mind you know the united states is not a christian nation no and we're a melting pot man. therefore i don't think you can impose christian morals on the population no and so you know while i personally would not you know want to do that myself mm-hmm. you know if somebody else wants i don't want them i don't want somebody who is you know, in a same-sex relationship, not being able to get health care, not being able to pass stuff to their kids, not being able right. to own property, not being able to get any of the benefits that I do, mm-hmm. you know, because of that. Mm, yeah. You know, that's, that's where I am on that issue. I think it's, you know, if in the, the state we're in, you know, I think you kind of have to have that. And if you religiously disagree with it, that's cool, but I don't think you can say the government has to do it. No. Um, that's where I am on that whole thing. Yep. How about you? I I, I totally am pretty much, I agree with that. Yeah, you know, like the, the people should be able to believe and express the opinions that they want, but they should not, they don't, they, uh, you have the right to feel how you do and you have the right to voice how you do yeah you also have the right to be offended but you don't have the right to oppress your point of view on someone else true so i think that's the biggest thing that i see as a problem is people are being offended and feel like that's an entitlement that they shouldn't be offended and that's not true you do have a right as much as a right as someone has to say their opinion and you have a you know it's your obligation to either be offended or not Mm -hmm. you know but that doesn't make, uh, you know, uh, what's wrong is when someone oppresses their views onto you, says you're going to live this way, you know. Right, right. So. I just think, man, if they want to get married, if the same sex want to get married, it, man, I have no problem with it. You want to get married, go for it. it. You know, if the state that you're living in doesn't allow it, or they do now, right? So. Well, I, I mean, don't think you can say no. I think that's. I think that's what the... And I think, you know, as far as states are concerned, I think maybe they felt, you know, that, you know, the government saying yeah, you can't do it, it yeah. is kind of overstepping the state's right to make its own thing. It kind of is. I mean, the federal government's not really there for that. And it's more more or less the, it's the state's responsibility to mm-hmm. govern its own people. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, hey, it, for me, how I look at it, the same-sex marriage. If you want to get married, hey, I'm happy for you. Go do it. Welcome to the institution, my friend. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it just, it, it, I can care less. I have other things. I have chickens and dogs and everything else that comes along with that. And, I mean, it doesn't bother me much. I just don't care. You want to get married? Go for it. I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know? Mm, cheers. 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 Weepy, weepy seco. Weepy seco. Well, there you go. What do you know? And that is the 724 flashback for the day. Our weekly segment uh, oh. highlighting historical events brought to you by 724 Cigars. Smoke a piece of history. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. Ooh, mm. What's the question? Oh. What do you guys take with you whenever you go out? What do you always have on your person? Wallet, cell phone, keys, lighter, cutter. Usually. I'm usually yeah, in that usually. same. It, I'm usually you leave in that yours same. around all the time. 98% of the time. <laughs> I'm, usually, I'm usually packing That's everywhere the, I go. The intent. You usually pack all, it, usually, usually have a gun? I'm, yeah. Well, I'm the, so. The intent how, many do you, how many guns do you have on you right now? Two. Two? Yeah. 
No, I'm just kidding. I only got one. Oh. Um, I think two. Well, as far as everyday carry, I mean, I have one, but I have, I have you my have more than one. Well, no, I have one, but I have yeah. rounds too, just in case I have to engage. And most of the times, the the statistic out there is, and I'm probably wrong, but mm -hmm. if you're engaging, you're gonna be putting more than 10 rounds down range most mm -hmm. of the time. So I usually have a backup. So I usually have a, another another mag with me. So I'm usually carrying anywhere between 30 to 40 rounds with me just mm -hmm. in case. Um, but yes, uh, firearm, yep. knife, got to have a knife. Knife, yep. Got to have a knife. No, knife you, or, didn't, you didn't say that. You, you didn't, didn't carry that. Knife or a multi tool. Right knife or a multi tool. I have two knives. Quit reaching, into, knife. quit reaching into your butt. <laughs> <laughs> not in my hip. That's, not my butt. So not, usually, not on camera. It's usually <laughs> it's might, usually got to be. I'm I'm never leaving. I got my Damascus Hunter right away. With uh, my multi tool and a knife, because you never know when you're gonna need yeah. uh, something. So that was one of the best things in that in that uh, pack from from Travis. Oh the, the, my God! The that pen. Know your wrapper pack has a pen, and Dude. it's got uh, it's a MacGyver screw, pen. It's got a screwdriver in it. It's got a Phillips head and a flathead, oh, flathead that screwdriver is, in it. That is an level. amazing and pen. He, measure. He, it, yeah, that. Ruler. Once he when he leveler? showed me that, I was like, "Oh, this that's is awesome. like part that's of going with me." Stylus. That's that's part of that. I just incorporated that into my EDC. So mm -hmm. I mean, so your what? My EDC everyday carry. Everyday carry. Yeah. So See, that's, this that's is what I'm getting at. What's your everyday carry? So that's, that's my awesome. EDC. So EDC. So it's 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 a pistol. Do you EDC. It's my it's a pistol, knife, multi tool, wallet with some cash because you got to have some cash these days. Um, I never cause you never cash. know. Never yeah, yeah. But you never know. I've been never caught in too many scenarios where <laughs> I had no cash and I'm like, okay. Like one time I was driving up to Maine a while ago and this is probably what it cemented it in me that always carry cash. And I was going up to Maine and I hit the tolls and I had no cash, mm -hmm. no cash. Through the tolls. And well, the lady the at the time I was a volunteer police officer and I, you know, I showed her the badge and she's like, Oh, you're, you're fine. You go ahead. But after that, I was like, Nope, I don't care if it's two or $3 in my, in my dash or on me or whatever. So always cash on me just in case. Cause you never know. Um, wallet, credit card, um, the pen or the pencil, obviously, mm -hmm. phone. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. And lighter, cutter, cigars. Always, always. Do you always have cigars with me? Always have pipes. cigars with me. Where always I'm going to pipes. a party where nobody smokes, or if I'm coming, if I'm going somewhere that I know a couple guys smoke, I usually always have five cigars on me. Constantly. Five. At least. At least five. Because I usually carry my tra I usually have my traveler with me, my mm -hmm. traveler humidor. Mm -hmm. So it's either five or I have like fifteen or twenty cigars. So I that is that is what I leave the house with. Mm -hmm. I do not care. We could be going somewhere where nobody smokes, mm. but there'll always be one guy. <laughs> there'll always be one guy because you you always take a. So the last time I went to a wedding, um. I forgot what wedding it was, but we went. It was me and my wife, my sister in law. We went to this wedding. I don't remember the wedding, but I remember the booth. We go to a. And yeah, that, I did a lot of drinking. Oh, speaking of which, the DJ was Baltazar. Remember Baltazar from um, uh, Jamma 94.5? Used to be yes, the DJ? Yes, yes, yes. He was the DJ at the wedding. It was crazy. I met him. I'll show you the pictures after. Yeah. But we were, we were there, and I mean. Nobody was smoking. Usually at a wedding, you get like one or two people outside, mm -hmm. and there was nobody smoking, not even smoking cigarettes. I was like, oh, damn. So we had a little break. My wife was, you know, conversating with, with old cousins and second cousins and stuff, and I saw a little break, and I'm like, all right, I got 30 minutes. Let's go. So I went outside, and I started smoking cigars, and I saw this guy peeking around the corner, and he came over, and he's like, hey, man, what are you smoking? I'm like, all right, cigar. He's like, do you got another one? I was like, you bet your ass I do. So I went to the car, grabbed the cigar, and we were just the, me and the only guy in the courtyard just smoking a cigar, which later we got told that we couldn't smoke in the courtyard, so we went back inside. But we were out there for a, a good 35 minutes. But there's nice. always – Now there's, you know why people weren't smoking. Yeah, exactly. It was probably a non-smoking facility. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I don't care. If, I, if I'm going to my in-law's house, if I'm going – to weddings if i'm going to a party whatever i'm always bringing it just in case man. that's that's for me i'm 
I'm a I'm a cigar smoker. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I do, and that's what I bring. What's your me. EDC, Dan? Well, um, phone, mm-hmm. the computer, of course. Well, I mean, saying wallet and keys. That's that's like. Where do you go without your wallet keys? You got you, you got to have nowhere. That. You can go. You can try, go to your front. You, you I can do go to try front like yourself to carry a little bit of cash on me, but mm-hmm. typically speaking, I always make sure I have some kind of you know I have I have some a uh, couple of credit cards for emergencies only. Of course, and I have one of them with me, all of, because you never know. Yep, when something is going to happen, um, you know, like one of my kids lives in Ohio. If I have to you know, on the drop of a hat, do something to get out to her for, for whatever reason. I want to be able to make those decisions and go. Yeah. So I always have that with me. Um, This is kind of weird. I I usually have my passport with me. I know. I saw that the other day. I'm like, what are you doing with your passport? You just ready to do some traveling? (laughs) That's it. It's like, hey, you want to go to Honduras? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, got now. it. Got it. You know, uh, you know, it's the the ultimate ID. You know, yeah, you it's should, true. I mean, you, know, you can get into any government building or whatever with that. Pretty much, yeah. ID. Know? So, um, always have an. I always Besides do have a knife. ID. Uh, I and you guys will see my one of the things I carry with me are nail clippers. <laughs> nail clippers. It's nail in my clippers. bag. I have nail clippers. Why? Nail clippers because. Hang nails, yes. dirty things. Okay, you know, you suck. work. Yeah, I want to deal with that all day. You know, yeah, I have, sucks. I have that. I have that in my bag. I think that might have to and, incorporate into my my stash. And body spray. Like you, I'm. I go everywhere with some cigars. Yeah. Usually five. Yep. Um, I Pipes. have. I have one of the. I have a pack that holds, you know, the lighter, the cutter, and five cigars. So mm-hmm. that's typically what I have with me. Yeah. But the same thing, it's for you and a friend. And of course, I have, like you said, pipes. Yep. I I don't really go anywhere without my dark bird's eye. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, I you you replace Cumberland. I have Cumberland almost always with me too. But okay, I was getting worried. I was like, wait a minute. That was typically a, speaking. That was a twenty plus year relationship. My there. bag, my oh. bag is over there on the chairs across the room, and both of those, Cumberland and Bird's Eye, are in the bag right now. There you go. And uh, four or five pipes. At least, and at least, and so I'm always, I'm always, but I, I have a, um, I typically carry the charger for my laptop mm-hmm. and a phone charger. Just I case. find that not only I might need it sometime, but other times other people need. Yeah, I always have like three or four phone chargers in my back. I think that's something that I probably would like to incorporate, like a little, mm-hmm. a little, yeah, a little battery that. pack or something mm-hmm. like I gotta that. I got to bring a battery. I have two of them at home, and I, I should have the the battery pack with me. Yeah. yeah. It's something else that I usually have with me in the car is a folding chair. Yeah. Like a camping kind really? of folding chair, mm-hmm. because you never know. You know, I've I've been caught. You know, either getting the opportunity to or being asked to go to the park or somebody's house or mm. someplace and you want a place to sit. You got to sit. And I have this, I have a really great chair and it holds <laughs> my cigars. My, my, yeah. It's got a little, like a cooler area. You could put some drinks in there. There you go. It's my, but I, I usually have that with me just in case I need a chair. You know what I also have with me? It just hit me right now. You said chair. I don't have a chair. But I have a first aid kit in my car. Mm. So we were, one of the reasons why I had a first aid kit is me and a couple of guys were doing training as far as weapons training, uh, trauma training. So if somebody got hurt, we would kind of know what to do or at least have a kit so we can kind of take care of, you know, maybe a... Triage yourself. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> so so that's something clear that, yeah i have a oh. I have ad in the car <laughs> yeah, yeah. and just hooking it up just for fun yeah, yeah. just driving bit clear try next to the chainsaw yeah um <laughs> no that's all that stuff at home but i mean i mean oh my god like a friend of mine his his everyday carry is unreal i mean the pistols and knives and uh, pens and um his wallet, his Yetis. Mm. I mean, it, that's just on his person. 
I mean, in his truck, forget about it. He he could probably uh, go to war with a with a it's small like army. Supernatural, you know, it just opens up the back. Oh and my it's god! Like, and it's just <laughs> like he's like that's the one person that I would definitely, if I needed something, he would be the person to mm-hmm. call because he has. I mean, first aid kit, um, tools. You know, weapons, f- everything that you could, chairs, whatever you, get, blankets, whatever you need. He's He has a, a full person tent in the back of his truck. Mm. He's just ready to go. So if he needs to go, just camp out, just, he's, he's ready. Love that fucking guy. <laughs> he's ready to go. That's a good thing to have, you know, blankets, tent. And you know, the first thing I gotta I gotta check that stuff off a box and, and, and like I got I truck. got most of that stuff, but I have that stuff at the house. Right. It's in a closet. Right. I have the tent. I have a four a four person tent. Well, I got folding chairs. You should have something for like an emergency. Like what if we're right. like a nuclear fucking whatever and you gotta go into the mountains? Well that would stop. <laughs> you know nuclear I mean? fucking something and you have a tent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that'll help. <laughs> well, what I'm thinking, it would you gotta run away from would, the population it would, it would and go out into the mountains, you know. Definitely stop least, with the radiation. You know, at least you have at least you have shelter. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But it's not raining on me, but my skin is glowing. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'm dry. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Mm. I can see my lungs, guys. Half halfway mark. What do you guys think of the drink, and what do you guys think of the cigar? Well, we know what you think of the drink, Nick. You know it. Well, I bought it, so yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the pairing very much. Um, I almost like what the scotch does. I almost like what the cigar does more to the scotch. Yes, than what it does to the cigar. Yeah, I've I never like, had this. I never had a cigar the with change, scotch. The change that the smoke makes to the scotch oh, yeah. is amazing, and it's mm. really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it brings out some great things about the scotch, but those flavors from the smoke, you know, mm. um, that you are kind of on the peripheral of the cigar, mm-hmm. just kind of pop with the pairing. Um, the the scotch itself, you know pairs with a lot of those and 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 is is very complementary to the flavors of the cigar yeah but it doesn't really change the cigar all that much yeah which is really good like i said when i called when i called tom and i asked him i'm like man i'm like you know i got these two great scotches i'm like what one could i go with with uh, a medium light to medium body cigar and uh, I told him what the scar was, and he's like, dude, he's like, go with the Abelor. Abelor is very neutral. Mm-hmm. He's like, got some great flavor, but it's not going to ruin a cigar. Mm. It's not going to overpower it in any way. It's going to really complement the cigar. So I was like, all right, man, you're, you know, you're the expert. So uh, so I went the Abelor. 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 Mm. But, yeah, I mean, what the – just the both the cigar and scotch, I mean, it's just – a mouthful of flavor. It totally it's not is, yeah. over, you know, it's not overpowering the cigar, and the cigar is just, it's really, you know, meddling well with the with the scotch, and it's like, wow, it's like really nice, and you're bringing a lot of that earthy, and there's some citrus in there, some spice, and it's just really nice. It's pleasant. It's definitely a lot of earth and leather in the cigar. Yeah. Definitely. Dave, what's your favorite? Guilty pleasure. Oh. Mm. Computers. <laughs> I don't think yeah, he probably. would qualify that as a guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You gotta make him think. What's your one? favorite guilty pleasure, Dave? Guilty pleasure? I don't guilty know. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Hmm. Oh. Um, I don't really feel guilty tater about tots. anything. <laughs> tater <laughs> tater, tater tots. tots and uh, Chick Fil A sauce. Yeah, that's a uh, damn good one, though. Chick Fil A sauce. Chick Fil A sauce is damn good, man. Yeah. I don't even think I know what that. It's that literally a it's sauce that you can buy in the store that's yeah. made by Chick Fil A. Okay, and it's the sauce that they use on in the restaurant. Only you can have it in your house too. And uh, wow, was that a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and it is, it is, oh, <laughs> French fries, tater tots, chicken nuggets, it doesn't matter, man. Oh, man. So basically fried processed food. Fried processed food with, uh, yeah, 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 Chick-fil-A sauce. Unbelievable. Yep. Oh, boy. That's, that's, uh, 
That's why it's a guilty. Yes, that's why that's it's a guilty, a guilty pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Danny, how about you, brother? Uh, guilty pleasure for me. And not righteous. Mm. I I have to admit, I'm I, I'm becoming a big gin and tonic dude. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sure. I really I have been trying all sorts of gins. Tell you got you on the gin kick, she huh? She did. She did. And God <laughs> bless her soul. I bought a bottle of that Malfi, you know, blood orange. Gin, yeah. And that bottle didn't even last four days. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> I didn't even know how to tell tell you. Look for it yet. It was so awesome. Oh boy. Um yeah, it, it's it's that's becoming one of my one of my big guilty pleasures is doing that. Gin gin. Well, that's you nice. know, uh I just it's like a bottle a week. And when you think about it, you know, if you drink a bottle over a week, that's not... It's not too bad. I mean... No. And, and the bottles are not that big. It's not like you're finishing not, off a handle, like no, me, a week, you know? Yeah. You know, a <laughs> bottle over every seven days. That's not... That's not... But it's a bottle every seven days, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, like, you know, I got a, you know... Uh, it's a piece of his check going into a bottle every week. Now. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. up to a month, yeah, up but to it's, a year. But it's like, like oh, I don't know yeah. what it is, but the heat, the summer, mm. makes me want a gin and tonic. I mean, that it's just light, good. it's refreshing, it's, to me, in my palate, I, I just really like it. I really it's like it. It's good stuff. I mean, you know? the times that we've had gin on the show, I mean, I've re I really enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Especially, yeah. I remember the first time we had uh, gin and tonic with Paul. Oh yeah, the Hendrix. I mean, yeah, with the with the cucumber. With the cucumber. I mean, that was spectacular. That was amazing. That was really, really good, man. Did and then the so? Monkey Forty Seven. That was really. I good. wasn't there for that one. That was amazing stuff. That's another one that Talia reps. Yeah. Monkey Forty Seven. What doesn't she rep? My God, she's a butt she like Wonder rep Woman. This. <laughs> yeah. You got to get that on your your portfolio, there, young lady. <laughs> if you're watching, all the Glenn Livets, she does those. Yeah, uh, you know, Glenn Fittitz James. too, right? She does the Glenn Fittitz too, I right? Believe so. Well, that was the first time that we had Glenn Fittitz twenty one, oh, wasn't was, it? That was freaking amazing. No, that was she, the, no, that was the first. No, that was. I think that was the first time we we had her on the show. We met her. No, the Glenn it was. 21? No, it was tequila. Was the first one. Why was we it? call her Tequila Talia? Oh. My mistake, but get this well, one yeah, in the portfolio. There was a guy that ripped it, didn't he? And he he went upstairs and he left us the whole bottle. Oh, like, yeah, that's right. Oh, I yeah. can't I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he we did. He, like, left us, he left us the bottle. Bro, bro. It was very, that very was good. a mistake yeah. on his. You guys part. were all like, "Dave, it's downhill from here" because it was the first time I ever had scotch. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Because it probably ruined you and for it the was. rest of your life. No, it, it ruined him. Tastes the it same. Him. <laughs> yep. Yep. Guilty pleasure for me. Another guilty pleasure of mine is cheese and crackers. <gasps> cheese and I mean, crackers. like, who and I, doesn't like cheese and crackers? But it's like every night. It's like I have to. Yeah. I, I, I know, love. I, it's I, like go to, my, I get that multi-pack at the store with all the different cheese slices from Tabit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're spending way too much money, and, Dave. And then spending is, way too much is, the You get, you get the box block, of Triscuits. You get the blocks, block of cheese. You get the cutting board that has the knife inside the cutting board, so you always have your knife and cutting board. It's really good. Cut the cheese. And then I, it, here, here's the thing. Here, here's where I kind of have gotten different. In a, in a vain attempt to con myself into thinking that I'm being healthy, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've gotten into cheese and pretzels. Oh, I've seen you eat that at the store. Cheese and pretzels. <laughs> and the, 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 the rationale behind it is yes, what? the pretzel has holes in it. Therefore, oh it's less God. carbs <laughs> oh my God. than a cracker, which is solid all the way across. And there's something about less that. Surface area. And there's something mm -hmm. about that. And and getting on into that, and this 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 may get me banned. Oh boy! Here here here's here the go. ultimate guilty pleasure. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, when you get to the bottom of the bag of pretzels, yeah. what's the bottom of the bag? Salt. Salt. Yeah. You lick the bag. I dump the salt out onto the plate. Or cutting board or whatever. Lick the plate. And I take the piece of cheese and, and I 
Oh, it in there. I dip press it in salt the, into I the press cheese. Press the salt into the cheese. Oh, and then it, your and cholesterol it, level. Then it is right just now. like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, and that God. makes you want more gin and tonic. You know what Stu shared with me? Speaking of cheese, he shared with me this uh, bag of popcorn, about? and it was Cabot's serious sharp cheddar. Popcorn. Cabot's sheer serious sharp yeah, what, yeah, yeah, what you said. Uh, yeah. and it, as soon as you it's as soon not... as you took a bite of this popcorn your mouth was instantly coated with this sharp cheddar and it was oh it was like it was like the cheese just melted all over your mouth it was like you. oh it's so beautiful oh my gosh but they don't I, i'm gonna have to buy it on amazon how they don't dare, sell it anymore how dare you so beautiful. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. It was the best popcorn ever. All right. Crazy. So I, I, I think I really pushed the envelope here. A little bit. You know, I, I shared some real guilty pleasures. So are you really going to just stick with tater tots and and Chick-fil-A sauce? Snack them. And that's and it. And that's bars. your guilty pleasure. Not rageous bars. The king size ones. Oh, man. I get spoiled with them, too. Freaking... Chris, do you like Chris Charleston Preventure? Chews? Do you get the Charleston Chew bars? No, I don't like Charleston Chews. Do you like the Tootsie Rolls? No. Oh, who doesn't no, like I like my nut rages. Apparently, Dave. Chris Preventure, he'll, he'll, he gets them for like less than a buck at his work, so he'll come in on Fridays and he'll hand me a bag filled with like two or three like king size nut rages. Do you like, just rat Dave. somebody out on live? And I'm just like, oh. <clears throat> Sounds like you just ratted somebody out. Teresa hates it. She's like, you're going to get too bad. Oh, boy. Yeah. Too late. Um, sorry. I guess it's a real guilty pleasure, kind of borderline. But she's the one who legal. introduced me to the Chick Fil A sauce, so that's your fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go, Dave. Right back at her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it's kind of illegal, but it is a definitely. I like guilty flame pleasure. throwers. <laughs> Actually, it's not illegal to own a flamethrower. Do you use it or a cannon or a cannon. anything large ammunition type of thing um uh speeding through the back roads of new hampshire on my motorcycle mm, i mean dangerous with all it's the very dangerous but i am when up... you say speeding on the back roads what does that mean 65. going like 60 kilometers an hour i mean because that's not really speed it's like 30 miles an hour i, I know <laughs> it sounds oh, really fast oh, though, right? oh. road hog yeah, yeah i remember no. on an episode I mean, an old episode of macgyver they're sh- he's on the hood of the car and they're showing the car and it's going 50 kilometers an hour i'm like oh <laughs> oh yeah that's really fast mac he's going he's going i'm not worried Light for you speed. at all <laughs> no for me i mean i mean I've done. Americans are dumb. I, I'm a big. Dumb. I'm a big fan of the, 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 TT. The TT. Yeah, the Isles of Man TT, which is the MotoGP, like one of the most dangerous races in the world, or the, one of the most dangerous races, period. And it's MotoGP, and it's not done on like you're not competing against uh, another person like head up like you would in normal. Um, normal like circuit racing Mm -hmm. um you're racing against your own your own time or the top time Mm -hmm. so uh you're taking your motorcycle and you're going through a small town in ireland and you're i mean people have died doing that i mean like almost every year people have died um and i'm a big fan of of Moto GP, and I'm dying. a big fan of no, not dying. I mean, obviously, I'm still here. Um, so, yeah, if I was a big fan of dying, yeah. yeah, I do. Um, Let me try that again. Wait, I can't. I can't. Dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I love that. And every time I get on my, every time I get on my my motorcycle, and I'm going through the back roads of of New Hampshire and hitting the twisties and all that, and I'm like doing a very crazy amount of speeds I'll, a speed that i will not say and i probably should not be doing but um we have a customer here that drives here doing like around buck 30 in a car or in a motorcycle because that's two yeah. different things yeah, in a car I yeah i don't want to get any more specific than that so when you're doing 130 <laughs> when you're doing 130 in a car and 130 in a motorcycle it's two different feelings i mean didn't they just nab a guy for doing 160 in in yeah they did. So there was that 
that guy that evaded the police. I think he was out in California or Texas. No, there was a guy in Vermont, and then he was in New Hampshire, and then I think in Mass, oh. they finally busted him. Oh, because he stopped. No, it wasn't that guy. It was the guy that, that Which, was. But he was doing 160. He was clocked. Oh, he was on 101. He was a uh, Massachusetts resident, and he was um, he did pull over for the police officer or the state trooper, but he was he got clocked at one sixty one sixty five, and um, yeah, I'm not that crazy. I, I've done <laughs> I've done I've done speeds like that, but on a controlled circuit. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But yeah, my guilty pleasure is twisting the throttle on my motorcycle and feeling my face and my guts go into my rib cage and coming down, you know, coming down a, a road where I can just see like maybe a, a, a half a mile and then just twisting it and watching the, be there two seconds later. Well, yeah, well, you're what you're going, you're going so fast. You're so one time I was, I was, I, I twisted like the that throttle on it. Like I can't, I can't just ski. I I just bought a just rocket straight down. down. Yeah, I love it. So one time I was, which is why I, I was on a motorcycle. One time I was going, I was going down. I I saw the, I have a digital gauge on my motorcycle, and I saw it go up by ten miles an hour every second. That's how fast I was going, and I was just I rolled it and I rolled it as long as I could, and I just to feel that, to feel that, that energy, and that speed. Just completely, just engulf you is. I mean, you could probably talk to any any motorcyclist or any person that does any type of track time or anybody that does um, drags or anything like that, and to have that feeling is second to none. I mean, that and you're seeing the the gauge go from fifty to sixty to seventy five, and just keep going. I mean, like it's. That is my guilty pleasure, and it's I shouldn't be doing it because it's unbelievably dangerous, especially doing it on normal roads. Um, because anything, I mean, like a car can at that speed, you have no time. Anything above forty-five miles an hour on a regular road, you shouldn't do because you have no time to stop at anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the thrill that you get from that is, I mean, <laughs> second to none. I'm sorry, that's my guilty pleasure. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> But I'll take I mean, my Chick Fil A sauce. Yeah. You could take your Chick Fil A. I love Chick Fil A sauce go, too. Go, but go, go, I go, have... go, Speed Racer. Yeah. Oh, a demon on wheel. God. <laughs> I love watching that movie too. I mean, like, who doesn't love? So, speaking of Speed Racer, the cartoon. Yeah. Never watched the cartoon, but when they made it a live action movie, mm -hmm. I cannot the the animation and. Um, the animation's outrageous. Yeah, the animation's outrageous. The just the characters that are in it. I mean, thank you, John Goodman. Oh my God, what a what a actor right there, man. I mean, but that whole movie, man. I mean, it was just I could watch that movie every day, and it's in my top five, man. I love that really? movie. Really, Speed I, Racer is in your Speed top five. Racer. I love that movie. I don't know why. I think it's just just. The craziness of it and how outrageous the racing is there and mm -hmm. the acting and not the acting is outrageous, but like just the over the top and just the graphics and everything about that movie. It was just so crazy, but I love it. I just, I just love it. Guilty pleasures. Nothing to say, Dave? Nope. Not about speed racer? Not speed racer guy. You're not a speed racer guy. Why do we have him on the show? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's it uh, for the, tonight, folks. Thank you very much. See you later. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Come on. What's the, your, original, what's your... the original anime. How could you not like speed racer? It was just stupid. Stupid. Some stupid Voltron kid. Stupid. Some stupid kid and his monkey car that's it's chim 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 yeah chim chim never went in the car i don't care who was with his little <laughs> <laughs> racer x you know finding oh, out who oh they i don't know <clears throat> yeah cough right into the mic i, yeah. I covered it yeah. <laughs> uh, seriously though what are our final thoughts on the cigar i don't have much left mm. so uh, 
By oh, this I time, mean, or we're almost done. <laughs> I mean, I took I took Travis. So, you know, we, we had our little um, our little How seminar mm-hmm. for the tobacconist at the shop. You know, he encouraged everybody to smoke slower. Mm-hmm. To take I noticed your time. you're smoking slower. I am, and I have been since that day, since Friday. I've been smoking. What about retrohaling, where he says only do it like twice during a scar? I can't do that. I just so automatically I've been, retro. I've I'm been like, trying. Oh, shit, I retroed. I've been really trying to only retrohale maybe two or three times when I'm smoking a cigar. I've been really, really trying. Why? Um, what was he saying about that? I he was saying, open the stores. Yeah, so he was saying that. <laughs> it's over. Basically, smoke he, is a foreign substance and it's overwhelming your senses and your smell is getting closed off. So, by retrohaling consistently, you're just blowing your palate out of the water. Yeah, so you well, should just, you should so you're just not going to be able to. Yeah, you're not, not going to be able, able to, to smell on your taste. Anything. Yeah, or when you're doing it too much, you're not going to be able to get more depth of flavor in that cigar. So you lose a lot of the nuances if you do it too much. Correct. Yes. Can so you your I've been right. slowing it up. I've been really kind of listening to what he was telling us as far as, you know, the, you know, what even we how to try. ash a cigar. You know? I've been doing that as well. Yep. So, I mean, but like this would be too much for him and he would just roll it like that. Just to have, keep some ash on it. But Cause I asked him, I asked him about, you know, is it true in his opinion that if you know the longer the ash the better the flavor because it keeps the cigar cooler and that's kind of like the myth between Mm -hmm. you know cigar smokers and aficionados and stuff like that um and he says that's no that you know it does an ash does control the the temperature but you don't need that you don't need that much you can have a little bit like this here you have a little bit and it will control the heat and it will control the flavor Mm -hmm. you don't need a the huge ash and stuff like that, or whatever. Right. If you're in competition or whatever, and I know they that have speaks the... more to construction than anything else. Right, exactly. But I mean, I've been really kind of taking his advice mm-hmm. and really trying to apply it the way, trying to apply that to how I smoke every day. So. Well, I'm impressed because normally you would be gone. I mean, normally I'd through, be starting another cigar. You know, you've already gone through two glasses of scotch. But... Well, that's nobody's <laughs> going to change that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You really need to slow down, Nick, so that you can appreciate the nuances of the liquor. Which yes, you... I know. No, I mean, <laughs> that's not, I don't think that's going to change. I can, yeah, I've done that before, no, too. One, one thing at a time, Dan. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is one step at a time. I've I actually done that before in the past. Mm-hmm. I've, I bought. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan. Right. Well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a fan. So I went out uh, a week ago and I bought this bottle of Art Bag. Hypernova. Hypernova. Hyper. What Hyper- kind of name is that? Yeah, right. It is a very small selection of art bags. It's very peated. It's a peated scotch. I love peated scotches. And the first time I had it, it was absolutely revolting. I It was just absolutely disgusting, but I loved it. I don't know if I can say that in the same sentence, but it just was. Did. <laughs> it was just the craziest peated stuff i ever had in my life but i i wanted more of it so i went out and bought a bottle took it home and i tried doing that i tried just sitting there sipping it i had one glass um and i just tried to sip it very very slow and take my time and i went through half the ball that night I How tried. are you the first one done with the cigar, Dan? That's what I want to know. Because you've both been yapping. That's true. You've both been doing a lot of talking. That's all. I've been sitting here listening to you. Going back So I've forth. had a lot more time to enjoy the cigar, I guess. Nothing bad about that. Mm-mm. Nope. It's good. Just not usual. Nope. Not usual at all. What do we got? What We're else have we got on the side. agenda? That's basically it, dudes. That's we just, we're basically done. Just us bantering on about about on. different things. You know what I did see? No. The other day. Good night. The other Good day. Night. No. <laughs> Secret Invasion. Oh, yeah. That's I watched out. that, too. I thought it was damn good. I thought what it was it? a good first episode. What is it? What? Secret Invasion? Yeah. Secret Invasion. Marvel. Marvel. No. Secret Invasion. Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Never heard of it. If it's not the Mandalorian, I don't <laughs> believe it exists. <laughs> Pretty much. So what synopsis? It's Marvel. It's so <laughs> slap. It's technically takes place. I want to say it takes place after what after. after so it, after, it takes after. place after uh, End Game of Avengers, yeah. and Nick Fury's up in um, heaven. No, he's up in Saber, which actually in the comics it the, wasn't Saber. Do you remember but... the scrolls? Okay, yeah. Okay, and how they shape change? Yep. Okay. It's technically that. They've been invading. And yes, taking slowly. Over people. They've been copying people, doppelganging. Well, technically the whole backstory is since Captain Marvel, which took place in the, the 80s, 80s. Um, Nick Fury has been promising the Skrulls a new world, that he'd find a new world for their family because in that movie they had the whole Skrulls nation or whatever left of them. Um tried to, you know, come to Earth and stuff like that. So Nick Fury has been, you know, promising them, you know, for the past 20, 30 years that he'd, you know, find a new world for them to live on. And he hasn't really been holding up to his promise. So they get fed up. And now that's where the whole secret invasion thing comes in. They're kind of slowly kind of infiltrating Earth and everything like that. So... And they're trying to. Well, I'm not going to say the rest because I'll right. kind of give the. Episode but now you away, don't but... know who's who. Yeah. But I mean, shoot them. You'll find out. Shoot who? Everybody. Everybody <laughs> just starts <laughs> shooting everybody. Yeah, that that's how heroes work. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I know. I'll it's... just shoot everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, you could do right. that. I mean. Doctor def- Strange has a little time thingy, so you can just shoot someone and just call. Well, does he still it. have the time stone? No, he doesn't have that anymore. He doesn't have the time stone anymore. No, he but that's too. that's awesome. You don't go back to when he did have the time stone. Bring it. How? When he doesn't have the time stone <laughs> to begin with? How are you going to travel back in time? I don't know. They don't you need don't reason. have the yeah. You go do. around you the need sun. It. It's not really important. It's not Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yep. Yep. No, but it, it looks like it's going to be good. It's six episodes. It's not yep. a long thing. Six episodes. And I will, I will say this. It's the, first, um, it's the first Marvel thing that's come out on Disney that's not, like, f- mostly funny. It's, right. It's supposed to be a more serious yep. story and plot line. Mm-hmm. And so far, the first episode kind of delivered. One of the interesting things about it was, to me, that the... Uh, Samuel L. Jackson was one of the executive producers of the show. I saw that. That was interesting. Yes. So does that? Hoorah. So does that tell that motherfucker? Kinda, yeah. So that kind of tells me, not tells me, but if he's if he's having a major role in in a in a series like that, mm-hmm. is he going to be leaving the MCU? Because he's he's up there in age. Yeah. I mean, he's in his, what, 60s? He's got to be in his 60s. Mm-hmm. So is that some kind of cementing? He's making sure that everything goes well, and then at the last episode, he kind of fades out? We'll see. We'll see what happens. That's true. He can't be around forever. But no, he can't. Right now, it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. I just can't no. wait for Deadpool 3. That's what I'm oh, come on. D3, Wolverine, mm-hmm. Deadpool. I mean, that. I mean, that's a Hugh scene. Jackman. Ugh. He's back. I love it. He's back. I can't believe that. I can't. I can't believe that. Mm-hmm. I am a huge Wolverine fan. I mean, mm-hmm. since the comics, since the animated series, back in the '90s, that was huge. I mm-hmm. love that. I still watch that to this day, man. But I mean, when he said after Logan, I mean, I was heartbroken. I, I went to the movies and I was like sobbing. Logan, Logan, Logan was, was a so, great movie. I was, was sobbing through the whole movie because I knew. Because he made the announcement, well, the studio made the announcement that, that was the last movie he was doing. So I was like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe I'm going to see this movie. It's going to be the last one that he's going to be playing Wolverine. And I was, like, sobbing through the whole movie because I knew that was it. That was the last movie that I'm going to see him as Wolverine. And then the ending was just like, oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. And then there was some trailer made. For Deadpool three, where Deadpool goes to his grave, and like turns, 
turns the X and he's like trying to, he's like, come on, Wolvie, let's go. We got to go. Wake up. Wake up. And I'm like, this can't be happening. And then like, what, five, ten years later, something like that, they're, they're making Deadpool 3 with Wolverine. Yep. So. Which in the timeline happens before that. What timeline? It happens before Wolverine dies. Really? Because that's in the future. Interesting. Or is it... That's in our future. So is it the same... No. So different timeline, different universe. Same no. timeline. Same timeline, same Earth. Different universe. Before u- Logan. Interesting. Deadpool 3 takes place before Logan. Oh. So that doesn't change. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So they're not messing with any... Uh, no. Any... Uh, what the hell's that word? Deadpool. Canon. He's going to mess any with Any canon it. stuff. So. Yep. <clears throat> Well, well, is the uh, Aladino classic classic? I think so. Is it worthy There's, of the classic name? I think it's classic with a twist of new ounces. <laughs> classic <laughs> with a twist of new ounces. New ounces, baby. Yeah. Dave, it's very classy. It's very smooth. Yeah, it's but very is it creamy. Classic? I think the question so. wasn't is it classy? It's, it is. Is it classic? It's classic because it's classy. That is a really good answer. Very good answer. Um, I think the cigar, uh, you know, lives up to that. It does have that kind of classic Cuban taste to it. Mm. You know, it um, um, the kind of things you look for in a in a good Cuban. These are the things you find in this cigar. Um, Julio does it a fantastic. Smoked. Yeah, <laughs> does a fantastic job <laughs> with the blending and. You know, before I even understood, you know, where the name came from, trying to get back to that kind of classic era Cuban cigar taste, I wondered, you know, why are they calling it classic? It's not like Aladino brought back a classic right. up from their line up or something. Mm. You know, like, you know, there's the Monte Cristo classic, and then mm. there's the White Series, the Platinum Series. It's like classic Coke. It's the original Coke. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, you know, this is, this is different but it's become one of my favorite aladino cigars yeah and i'll be honest i can smoke anything aladino makes i mean i love all this i have my favorites mm -hmm. but this has become one of those favorites yeah i mean the connecticut the cameroon i mean the one that i probably smoke the most because i'm i love full body cigars is the maduro i mean even their candela was freaking fire there the candela i mean is a great cigar i mean there's no other Candela in our but walk-in. That, 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 that Corojo number four, though, Hall oh, Reserve. Oh, yeah, the number oh, four is really good. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. that's my that's personal favorite. Yeah, but I mean, this cigar. I mean, I, I mean it definitely. It I mean it definitely rounds out their portfolio. It definitely not, does. Yeah. Not that it needed to be. Yeah. Round out because mm-hmm. I mean they got they the Connecticut. They got the yeah. Between I mean the Connecticut, the Cameroon, the the original Corojo and the Maduro. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean. This is the candela. Hopefully, this is just another, another wonderful cigar mm-hmm. that they added to their portfolio. Yep. All Sweet. right. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks for being with us tonight. Mm. Glad you were with us, and we'll see you again sometime next week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not just blowing smoke. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at notjustblowingsmoke. Thanks for listening, everybody, and that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. Rolling with the top down floor.